You got answers, what is Al-Islam? You got answers, who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And I'm here today to speak. Where do you get these answers? There's a lot of misconception about Islam. A lot of issues about Islam. People have questions about. Because that's all you see in the media. That's all you see. You see Muslims. You see the word Islam. You see the word uh, Muslim fundamentalist, Muslim extremist, radical Muslim. You hear the word terrorism. You hear the word jihad. You hear the word holy war. Do you question what these things are? And when you question what they are, where do you get your answers from? Because when you're there watching CNN, when you're watching MSNBC, or reading the newspaper from New York Times or Washington Post, you let these people tell you what it is. You let these people tell you what Islam is. Does that make sense? If you want to know about Islam, if you want to know about the Quran, if you want to know about Muslims, who should you go and question? Should you go question a non-Muslim media? Should you go question CNN? Would you go up to these MSNBC newspapers and tell them what is Islam? No. You should go to Muslims instead. Because if I want to learn about medicine, if I want to become a doctor, I should go to a college that specializes in medicine. I should not go to a college that specializes in computer technology because it would make no sense. Indeed, if I want to be a lawyer, I should go to a college that specializes law, not a college that specializes computer technology because it will make no sense. So if you want to know about Islam, if you want to know about Muslims, who should you go up to? Should you go up to a Christian man? Should you go up to a Christian man? Should you go to the media? Or should you go to a Muslim? Should you go to a masjid where Muslims are and question about Islam? Because I could guarantee none of you here ever, ever sat down with a Muslim. No one ever sat down at least 10 minutes with any Muslim and go with the questions over your head. You flip the TV of your channel. Whatever the media says, you take it. Wait for this person. Why? This term Islamophobia. The media has created Islamophobia in this society. Whatever you see, whenever you see a Muslim praying in the streets, or you see a Muslim with a beard, right away, I guarantee you right away, the word terrorism pops up in your head. Why? Why does that term pop up in your head? How come when you see a Jew with a beard, it does not pop up in your head? How come when you see a Christian with a beard, it does not pop up in your head? Because you let the media think for you. When you're flipping those channels and you're absorbing all, you're absorbing all these fake information right away when you see Muslims. I bet all of you here today, right away you say these people are radicals, these people are terrorists, these people are extremists, these people are fundamentalists. Some of these words you may know what it means. Do you know what fundamentalism is? When you say, when you see, when you see the media, when the media says this person is a fundamentalist Muslim, do you question what does it mean? No, you don't. Well, let me ask you, fundamentalism is a good thing. It's good to be a fundamentalist. We are all fundamentalist Muslims here. Every one of us is a fundamentalist Muslim. Why? Because we follow the fundamentals of Islam. If you see a police officer, he is a fundamentalist officer because he follows the fundamentals of law. When you see a doctor, he's a fundamentalist doctor because he follows the fundamentals of medicine. Same as a lawyer. Every lawyer is a fundamental lawyer because he follows the fundamentals of law. So same as Muslims. Every Muslim is a fundamentalist because every Muslim follows the fundamentals of Islam. And same if you're a Christian. You must be a fundamentalist Christian because you have to follow the fundamentals of Islam. You must follow the fundamentals of the, fundamentals of the Gospel. And if you're a Jew, you follow the fundamentals of the Torah. And if you're a Hindu, you follow the fundamentals of Hinduism or Buddhism. So now you know this, now you understand this concept of fundamentalism. So now, you see in the media how it portrays Muslims it uses all these big fancy words but you never think you never think about terrorism if Muslims think about war or Muslims think about women who should you go up to? should you go to a non-Muslim? should you go to the media? or should you go to a person? and this is clear but how would you get these misconceptions clear? you should sit down with the Muslims
wisdom and go over the questions you have. You should not re pick up a newspaper and start reading. You should not flip the channel and see what CNN or MSNBC says. What's going on in other countries? That's what makes them so innocent. Many people here don't know what's going on in Afghanistan. They don't know what's going on in Iraq, where the government is sending your children, sending your daughters to fight, and they're being killed every day for what purpose? Americans don't care about that. Because we have lack of knowledge. We don't listen to nonsense music, wasting time on nonsense activities. You must understand these things. You must understand that every American is lacking of knowledge. They don't know the reality. That's why many people come here in Times Square. They come here to escape reality. With all these fancy lights, with all these tall buildings, you want to escape from reality. Because you don't have lack of knowledge. You don't understand what's going on. You are a lost sheep. You're just a bunch of sheep. And the one who's ruling you is the shepherd. He is telling you what to do or what not to do. Well, let me ask you something. Muslims are not like that. Muslims are very rational. We're very intellect. We know. We know what's going on in society. We understand the reality. And what is those reality? So why don't you prepare for that journey? Don't you understand that death is the only thing that's guaranteed in life? It's the only thing. No matter how much you try to escape it, you try to come to Times Square and remove your mind. No, no, no. Death will come to you. It will follow you. Death is like a shadow. Wherever you go, it will come. And we Muslims understand that. We know our creation. We know what our purpose in this world. And we know where we're going to end up. But do you know your purpose of creation? Do you know what's going to happen after you die? Are you prepared to meet that journey? Like I said, the only thing that's guaranteed in life is death. All of you will die one day. All of you. Without a shadow of a doubt. No one can argue that. So if you know that you're going to die one day, should you start thinking that what's going to happen? A million American citizens are sleeping hungry every night. Instead of that being the main issue, what is the other issue? It's Britney Spears. Oh, Britney Spears broke her uh, knees. Oh, God forbid. Oh, this is the new album that came out for rap. Oh, the Yankees won. The Giants lost. And everyone talks about those issues. And you don't understand about issues that you face, that your own citizens face. Your own citizens, your neighbors, are sleeping hungry every night. Your children and daughters are being sent away 10,000 miles to die. Fighting, fighting for so-called freedom, so-called democracy. But you don't think about that. But once it comes to you, it will be too late. Because that Islamic book was sent down with the Muslims. Who was the last time you really did that? I urge you. I urge you to sit down with any Muslim. Any Muslim, sit down with him and go over any topics you want to discuss about. Or any other topics. Because we're facing a lot of issues. And like I said before, the media has made every person Islamophobic. Anytime a person hears Islam, right away terrorism pops up in their head. Right away, this person is a radical. This person is from the challenging mankind to use his intellect. The Creator Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is drawing our attention to the creation and the primary characteristic of order, limitation, and dependence on, his, on the designer. So we ask the people of society to come forward, come forward and learn about Al Islam. Because know this, that Islam is a God, an ideology that is growing in this society. How can you live in this society and choose to ignore the Muslim, choose to ignore Islam? While in your own society, Muslims and Islam are growing. Should we handle with Islam? Come forward, we'll be sure. We'll be happy to clear up any misconceptions you have about Islam and Muslims. There will be questions about terrorism. Are Muslims view the council of terrorism and oppression? You come up to us and we'll clear and we'll clarify it for you. And just to know this, very simple factor, the most of the majority of the people in society are even aware of, and that is that there is no Islamic government that exists in the world today. That you see those rich kings in Saudi Arabia ripping the resources of their own people, living in these fancy mansions, living in these fancy mansions built of gold. These are not the ideal Muslims. So no matter how much the media portray that Saudi Arabia is practicing Islam, no they are not. King Fahad, the leader of the ruler of Saudi Arabia, he's not a Muslim.